from the Mercy One Studio. Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists. Be Not Afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Join Father Fabian Moncada every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Also tune in Sundays at 1030 a.m. for Be Not Afraid in Spanish on Iowa Catholic Radio. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Good morning. Welcome to Iowa Catholic Radio. Be Not Afraid. Father PJ, good morning. Good morning, Father. We are in our radio station from 11.50 a.m., 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM. So let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in profession the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and in the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are in an amazing week that will be prepare the entire human being for the Holy Ghost. Come Holy Ghost. Yeah, so 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 Pentecost is of course the time when the church now focuses our attention on the movement and action of the Holy Spirit. And that is not simply a, a static event that happened once upon a time in history, just as the incarnation isn't simply a static event that happened once upon a time in history, but it's an event that changed all of history so that now every moment is 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 competent of a Pentecost. Every moment can be the coming of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. The divine brief after Jesus has ascended to heaven from the Mount Olivet, the apostles and disciples return to the holy city. They remain together in the upper room, the place where Jesus had appeared to them, and which may well be called the first Christian church. About a hundred and twenty persons were assembled there. They chose Matthias as an apostle in place of the unhappy Judas. They prayed and waited for the paraclete. So the first novena is that which takes place in anticipation of the Pentecost. So that's the reason that Ascension is typically celebrated on a Thursday, though now it's usually moved to a Sunday. Um, and, and, and the idea is that those nine days, they waited, they fasted, and they prayed. So it's a very, very intentional prayer, something much like what we would think of as retreat today. Um, and, that, and that it's all in anticipation or preparation of something coming. And so uh, I think that's important when we go to St. Novena's to just remember, like, this is the, we, we should expect God to do something here. Um, and, and, and we should expect the Holy Spirit to act in a rather direct way. But I also think it's important because it helps uh, it helps situate this this moment of Pentecost in the in the lives of those uh, first disciples who were confused and didn't understand themselves what was happening around them. If we're talking about symbols from the Pentecost fire. Red, what is the meaning? Uh, wind, of that? wind. Um, yeah, yeah, and 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 doves, right? So, 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 so all the signs associated with the Holy Spirit. I think in English, especially, this often gets lost. So, um, so the word spirit is directly related to the word breath. It's a little bit hard for us to see in English, but if you aspirate your food, if you aspirate your food, it means you breathed in something that you were trying to swallow. Uh, we're used to the word inspiration, meaning like uplifting or happy or something, mm -hmm. but it literally means breathing, in breathing, right? Um, and, uh, and, and even pneumonia, right? Pneuma is the Greek word for Pneuma. spirit or for breath. And so, it, so, so, so spirit and breath are not um, metaphorically alike. They are the same thing. Um, the Latin word for soul is anima which is where we get the word animation. And the idea behind animation, the way we think of like cartoons, um, is because they're moving pictures. They're, they're pictures that are alive. And so if we can think about it that way, the Holy Spirit, spirit in general is the living principle, the thing that gives life to a thing. And the Holy Spirit is that which gives life to the church. 
Come, Holy Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. I back immediately to the liturgy of the word about the Easter vigil. Mm -hmm. It's incredible how this Holy Ghost moving from the beginning of the whole creation to not only enlighten it, to provide life, life from the Father. So the Spirit hovers over the waters in, in those first moments of creation, and, and, and then, of course, God breathes the breath of life into the man, his own breath. Later on, uh, when God sort of recreates the world after the flood, it is a dove, which ultimately tells Noah that the world is safe to return to. And then the Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus himself, on that first Easter day, breathes uh, on, on, on the apostles to sort of signify this new creation, something new is happening here. You're being made new. So when we say, come Holy Spirit, Spirit fill the hearts of your faithful, renew the face of the earth, we, we mean it literally, like make us a new thing, do in us that new thing. And when that new thing is done, it changes everything. Absolutely. And also Christmas Mass, when the, when the, when the, bishop, when, when the bishop breathed upon the oils. That is amazing. In the, in the old rite of baptism, uh, the, the priest would breathe on the infant or the adult that was being baptized, and he would say, Depart, O evil spirit, make room for the Holy Spirit. Depart, O Holy Spirit, make room for the Holy Spirit. And, and this, I think, is, is just a good prayer for us in our own lives, right? Um, not that we're all possessed all the time or something like that. <laughs> but all of us have gunk inside that we need to get rid of in order to make room for something more and better. And also, Father, when we incline a little bit of ourselves for the consecration, when we speak out the words of consecration over... The... We're breathing over the elements, and that's Absolutely. very intentional. In fact, uh, in... Um, in former times, the rubrics were even clearer. It doesn't mean they're not implied now, but they were they were much more explicit. That the 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 celebrant's breath was to reach the elements. That's sort of what affected it, because his breath was that which contained it. Now that doesn't mean that if there's multiple saboria, it doesn't take or something, right? But it but it's aligning our liturgical prayer, the the, the action of the church together with um, with the the journey of salvation that saves us even through the scriptures. Be not afraid. Father PJ, Father Fabian, Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Lee and Eddie in the Morning is provided by Blessman International. Blessman International partners with volunteers and donors to provide sustainable programs for children in South Africa by leading a 12-day, all-inclusive experience sharing the heart of Christ with vulnerable children in South Africa. Teams are forming to do something significant in an African child's life. Learn more at blessmaninternational.org. That's blessmaninternational.org. Thank you, Blessman International, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Lee and Eddie in the Morning provided by Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. Bell Construction. Thank you, Big Red Q Quick Print, for underwriting the sports report. Family owned and operated since 1980, Big Red Q Quick Print is a full service print shop ready to help you with all your printing needs with speed and accuracy. Forms, manuals, brochures, letterhead, envelopes, business cards, custom invitations, design, and bindery. Big Red Q Quick Print, located across from Merle Hay Mall. Online at bigredq Des Moines.com. Big Red Q Quick Print. We make printing easy. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now, provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Dowling Catholic Sports is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic. With two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling graduate, and Dr. Craig Harper, the Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at 60th and Ashworth in West Des Moines. 515-440-4610 or online ashworthvision.com. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid. 
Father PJ, Father Fabian, Iowa Catholic Radio. Suddenly, there came a song from heaven as of a violent wind. It filled the whole house. And there appeared to them parted tongues as of fire, which settled upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So, wow. the, so the imagery of fire, again, is, is drawing off the Old Testament imagery of, of, of course, first the bush by which God makes his presence known to Moses. And then, of course, it's the pillar of fire that leads the people um, through, the, th through the desert. Now, that fire, which was kept, you know, as, as a lamp in the temple to signify God's presence, much as our sanctuary lamps do today. Now that fire descends upon the Lord's disciples themselves so that they become the temples of the Holy Spirit, the dwelling places of God. So that just as, 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 as God has been manifest in Christ Jesus in, a, in an absolute and uh, sort of exhaustive way, so each of us now can bear God's presence in a way we weren't capable of before. So that theological meaning about fire, that is the same fire that we have been using for the Easter vigil. That's right. Blessing the fire. And then we'll Lighting be the from that blessing fire and light the Paschal candle. That's right. And then for the baptisms, still using our uh, the, the, the Paschal candle for it. It's not only an, uh, an abyssal or any kind of warm it scenario. It's more than that. It's power mm -hmm. and force as well. You know, I'm, I'm often struck. The Latino community does this much better than the Anglos do, right? They, they come with the kits, with the, 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 the candle already in place. Absolutely. And, and, and this is important. Um, historically, that candle stayed with you your whole life long so that so that the, you would carry the same candle that you were baptized with at your first communion and your confirmation um priests used to bear a candle at the or, and deacons it, it, when you were ordained you carried a candle in and the idea was that was your baptismal candle even if it wasn't the same physical candle and once upon a time it was part of the marriage rite too i think it would be a wonderful thing if we restored at least some sort of custom attached to this so that people understood when the actions of the church happen in your life, this is not something distinct from or like other than your baptism. Yeah. It's just a logical consequence of what began when you were a child. And of course, at our, at our death, at the, at the funeral mass, you're parked right next to the Paschal candle on purpose because it's the same light that continues Absolutely. to burn. Absolutely. Exactly. As literally said, the ritual from, from baptisms, receive the light of Christ. That is also the presence of the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. We, we can talk also that Trinitarian presence, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in the same fire, you know, because the Father fulfilling God's love through the action of the Holy Spirit. On Christmas, we celebrate the birthday of Christ in his physical body. Pentecost is the birthday of the church of all those who have been reborn into his mystical body. So... There's um, the, 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 the birthday of the church imagery is very old and it, and it gets used and it's playing off of two kind of uh, images, right? So, so, so the, the spirit, the driving wind going through the household that day when the spirit descends upon the apostles is, is remembering this moment when God breathed life into the man. I know he's breathing life into the body of the church. But there's also an element um, that, that, that on Good Friday itself, as the Lord hangs on the cross, just as the woman was taken from the rib of the man, so the church is born from the side of Christ. So that when the soldier opens Christ's side with the lance and blood and water come forth, Beautiful. right? Baptism and Holy Communion come forth from the side of the Lord. And, and it's as though that life is what's now given in the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is, of course, perfected in the sacrament of confirmation. And also we can talk in that is a very interesting analogy that those apostles and those people have been congregate mm -hmm. expecting something special, exactly the same when we are in the vigil for Pentecost. We are expecting the Holy Spirit. This is why the liturgy have vigil mass. Mass of the day as well. That's know? right. So, so, so vigil masses are widely, wildly misunderstood uh, these days. The, the, the vigil mass for sa the Saturday night mass before Sunday was never intended to just be like a more convenient time to go to mass so you can golf on Sunday or something. No, no, no. Uh, it's not what this is for. Good. If we were doing it right, we would celebrate a vigil mass and then probably like 
keep adoration before the Blessed Sacrament all night long until you got to the festival the next morning, right? Because the idea is that the vigil is preparatory. The vigil mass of Pentecost is as though the church gathered again in the upper room waiting for the descent of the Holy Spirit so that the language of the prayers for the vigil is preparatory or anticipatory and the language of the feast itself is is sort of exultant in the moment as it's happening around them. When we uh, encourage the people to pray together and uh, some of the charismatic movements said that when one or more than one person has been prayed, the Holy Spirit will be arrived mm -hmm. in that uh, scenario. And also we can express that our prayer groups have been enlightened for the Holy Spirit when they pray together as unity. You I, know? I think one of the more telling things, uh, you, know, you know, you asked about the color red, and, and we use the color red because it's red on a fire. Um, the Eastern churches on Pentecost Sunday typically wear green. Oh, green. And it's because they don't wear green the way we do as sort of the default setting the, the rest of the year round. Uh -huh. But for them, the greenness here is, is redolent of life. So the Holy Spirit brings life. And just like like like, like uh, wheat springs green, like grass grows green in the springtime, so now the Holy Spirit is giving life and causing us to grow. Um, and, and, and I think that's worth reflecting on because there's a danger in overemphasizing um, the, the coming of the Holy Spirit as like, a unique kind of shock value type action, right? But, but of course, most of our experience in the spiritual life is that this growth is slow, just like the growth of a, a plant. It, it doesn't happen all at once. There are peak moments, to be sure, but, but, but the God works us from the inside out so that by the time we've come the new thing, we've become the new thing. It's Renewed. almost like we didn't notice ourselves. Absolutely. And also, well, let us, let us move in, into the break. Iowa Cattle Radio, be not afraid. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Savage Power. Join us on Thursday, June 3rd for our 10th annual gala benefiting Intervisions Healthcare. We're thrilled to welcome Benjamin Watson, former NFL tight end and Super Bowl champ, who has an inspiring message about the importance of being the one. Ben, along with his wife and seven children, are great supporters of pregnancy clinics like Intervisions. As a medical nonprofit, all proceeds from the gala support our life-affirming services. We promise it'll be an evening that you'll long remember. For more information, visit IVHcare.org. And thanks for supporting the women and babies of Intervisions Healthcare. Since 1924, St. Vincent de Paul has been helping those less fortunate work towards self-sufficiency. Last year, St. Vincent de Paul helped over 20,000 individuals with food, clothing, and shelter, while also offering classes in financial literacy, high school completion, career readiness, and prisoner re-entry. SVDPDSM.org, 515-282-8327. Shop, donate, volunteer, serve. This message was brought to you by Homemakers Furniture. Man up and be part of the Iowa Catholic Men's Conference Saturday, May 22nd at the Embassy Suites downtown, starting with Mass at 7.30 a.m. Speakers include Gary Dolphin and Tim Jamison, hosted by Joe Stopulis and John Leonetti. Learn more at iowacatholicradio.com slash events. Iowa Catholic Radio and the Iowa Catholic Radio Foundation welcomes country artist Lori Morgan, presented by Mercy One. Lori Morgan. To the Horizon Event Center, July 15th. Of no, don't you With Jesse Keith Whitley and Eli Alger. Eli Alger. Learn more at CelebrateCountry.org. CelebrateCountry.org. Sponsored by Valiant Wealth Family Office. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. So... This solemnity of the Pentecost have a special part into the liturgy of the word sequence. What is the meaning of the word sequence? So sequence, literally, sequentia just means following. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it's a kind of a memory from the time. So for most of the church's history, there haven't been two readings before the gospel. There's only been one. And then the thing that we think of now as the responsorial psalm was a psalm. And it was called the gradual because it was taken from those psalms that were taken um, that, that, that were said as the people went up the mountain, because the idea was we're like going up the mountain to listen to the word of God, which is fulfilled in the gospel. Sequences are special songs that are really intended as sort of extensions of the Alleluia. 
So it's like it's like it's like a series of verses that would be interspersed between the Alleluia, which is why the end of the sequence always ends with Amen, Alleluia, because you're supposed to then flow right into the Alleluia itself. Um, the sequences are are, are long hymns. Uh, like tightly uh, tightly composed poems with a lot of imagery that's intended to focus our attention for the feast and especially prepare us to listen to the gospel of the day. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home, see the ray of light divine. Come, Father of the poor. Come, source of all our store. Come within our bosom shine. So the idea is, right, that, that, that we're invoking the Holy Spirit. The, the technical language here is the epiclesis. Epiclesis is when the, the church invokes the Holy Spirit upon a person or an object in order that it be changed. So the, the epiclesis most of us are most familiar with is when the priest extends his hands just before the consecration at the Mass and prays that the Holy Spirit would transform the gifts of bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. But the same action happens in the other sacraments, too. In the great blessing over the waters at Holy Baptism, in the the blessing of the oils at the Chrism Mass, which is then used at Confirmation, which is why the bishop not only extends his hands but breathes over the sacred Chrism, in uh, in the rite of ordination with the laying on of hands at the uh, at the sacrament of matrimony in the nuptial blessing, uh, the same thing. The Holy Spirit is invoked and the hands are extended over the couple. That of course happens most perfectly. Uh, at the nuptial mass when it's happening during mass and is attached to the Eucharist itself. So the Eucharist having just been made and hands extended over the couple so that they would be transformed as the gifts. There was a time when the wedding bands were not blessed separately, but were simply set on the corporal during the consecration so that they were sort of blessed by proximity to the blessed sacrament itself. Um, uh, and uh, and then, of course, in the sacrament of holy anointing um, and, and, and penance, both when the hands are extended or laid upon the person, this this is the, invoking the action of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit always transforms that which it touches and perfects it, makes it the most perfect version of itself, which is why the fathers of the church say um, the reason God invented wheat was so that one day it could become his body. The reason God invented grapes was so that one day it could become his blood. And so the same thing is true for us. The reason God invented us was so that one day we could be perfected in the image of his son. You of comforters the best, you the soul's most welcome guest, sweet refreshment here below. In our labor rest most sweet, grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. O most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of yours, and our inmost being filled. So playing again with images that, that, that we know well, but sometimes turning them a bit, right? So sweet coolness. Usually we think of the Holy Spirit as hot, but there is something uh, delightful ab- ab- about the, the you know, a uh, cold towel on a hot day sort of thing. Um, and this, of course, gives life, which is the reason that it's associated with the Pentecost. Um, uh, um, s- sweetness, heat, light, grace, all the good things that we know in life that support and sustain our lives are ultimately signs of the Holy Spirit. Nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength and renew. On our dryness, pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilty away. Then the stubborn heart and will. Melt the frozen, warm the shield. Guide the steps that go astray. So that language of dew is very significant. The, the, the Holy Spirit coming go like deeply. the dew fall to change the gifts of bread and wine. And the same thing happens at every Mass. Uh, the, the quiet prayer the priest says at the offertory um, uh, th- that's, that's drawn from the, the, the prayer of the three young men in the fiery furnace, right? Um, w- uh, with, holy, with humble spirit and contrite hearts, uh, may this sacrifice be rendered pleasing unto you, O Lord our God. The longer version of the prayer speaks about dew coming to quench the fire. Um, and so, and so, every time the Spirit comes, He effects a sacrifice within us. On the faithful who adore, I confess you evermore. In your sevenfold gift descent, give them virtues, sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end. Amen. 
Alleluia. So ultimately, the recipients of the Holy Spirit are the faithful themselves who are most transformed and so conformed into the image of Jesus. In important ways, it is the Holy Spirit that makes us faithful, not simply our own act of fidelity. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. The best preparation to receive the Holy Spirit, obviously, grace state mm -hmm. and holy communion as well. That's Is right. any, cli any kind of indulgences for that celebration? Um, you know, I'm sure there are, but I didn't look them up before. So <laughs> get on the Internet and check out the Incuridian of Indulgences and see what's available for the Pentecost. <laughs> Absolutely. Father, we are approaching our ending program. Could you please send that with your blessing by the Holy Spirit, by the way? May uh, God the Father bless you, God the Son heal you, and God the Holy Spirit sustain you and bring you his grace, now and always and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, be not afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Join Father Fabian Moncada every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Also tune in Sundays at 10.30 a.m. for Be Not Afraid in Spanish on Iowa Catholic Radio. Go forward and be not afraid. Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists.